everyone, welcome to a day in the life of a Johns Hopkins University student. Um, just for a little bit of background, my name is Julia and I applied to Johns Hopkins University ED1 last November and I'm currently studying English. I also want to preface this video with the fact that I'm very shy and I don't want people to know that I'm filming so a lot of the shots may be a little bit shaky because I was trying to hide my phone. at seven today yay go me and then the first thing i do is change into my workout clothes take off this do not disturb sign since i sleep really early so it's just to let my roommates know when i'm asleep i live in mccoy in a suite with two doubles we have a kitchen that has two stoves and a mini fridge but no microwave so we had to get our own there's actually a lot of storage space and we've never really had a problem with storing kitchenware but one thing i will say is that the fridge is pretty small so if you're going to be planning on cooking and stuff we've had a little bit of issues with that and one of my suite mates even has her own fridge overall i'd say our dorms are pretty spacious I've been to AMR 2 and I've seen really how low the ceilings are and how little space they have in their rooms And my double is actually the smallest on our floor and we still have more space than the people in AMR 2 So I'm pretty happy about McCoy plus with a suite you get your own bathroom Which I cannot imagine using those public bathrooms But at the same time you kind of have to coordinate with your roommates and see who's showering when because sometimes we run into problems Where I need to get to class and I need to shower but someone's using the bathroom But after a while you kind of get used to it Also one of the windows isn't really sealed properly so a lot of wind gets through and it's kind of cold sometimes and our shower is really tiny and there's nowhere to put your shower products so you always need a shower caddy but i heard that some other rooms have showers double the size of ours Also, it's only October, but the weather has been in the low 50s, which apparently is abnormal. This is probably the same for all colleges, but the door automatically locks, and if you get locked out, you have to call security, and then after a few more times of getting locked out, you have to pay a fee. Also, our hall is insect slash jungle themed. A lot of different dorms have their own themes, which I think is really fun. This is the McCoy East common room, where a lot of people will hang out at night and maybe watch movies and host fun activities. We also have a social lounge on the terrace level, but I don't really go there that much. There's almost always someone in the common room, and I can always say hi to them when I pass by. So the culture of our floor is pretty social, but I'm not sure if that's an abnormality or if McCoy is always like this. Also, one thing I want to mention is that I actually live on the first floor of McCoy, but there's actually a terrace level and then the first floor, so the first floor is technically the second floor because I have to walk down a flight of stairs to get to the actual first floor. Random thing that I really love about Hopkins is how many automatic doors there are, so I can just swipe my hand on that little button and the door automatically opens. Which is nice, of course, for disabled people, but also for lazy people like me. Also, it was kind of rainy and dreary today, so the campus doesn't look as pretty as it usually does. I'd say it rains every few weeks, so you definitely need an umbrella. I'd say the weather in general is pretty hot and humid in summer, and there's lots of mosquitoes. And obviously, it gets really cold in winter. To get to campus from McCoy, you have to cross this road, but overall, I'd say McCoy is in a pretty convenient location. Here's a map just to show you how big the campus really is. So this is McCoy and it takes about 10 minutes to walk to the rec center, aka the gym. The blue dot is Schaffer, which is where I have most of my classes, and it's about a 10 minute walk from McCoy to Schaffer. Also, this is Nolan's, which is one of the main dining halls on campus, and it's about like two to three minutes away. Also, Charmar, which is the campus grocery store that also has meals, is right around the corner. It takes like one minute to walk there. Also, I wanted to point out CVS, which is like a three minute walk, and the Streets Market, which is a grocery store that basically has literally everything that you could need. Just for reference, here are the other freshman dorms on campus, and here are the dining halls on campus slash places that you can just get full meals. And this is Brody slash the Eisenhower library that literally everyone goes to. It's like a five minute walk from McCoy. I have most of my classes in Wyman Quad, but if you're a STEM student, you'll probably have classes in these places too. In short, I just think McCoy or Woman actually are really good places to live just because there's the sweet option. It also is close to all the restaurants that people go to on weekends. And honestly, out of the people I've talked to, no one really seems happy to be in any of the AMRs. People kind of like to shit on McCoy because it's bad as a sophomore dorm compared to the other sophomore dorm options, but as a freshman dorm option, I think it's really good. One thing that shocked me was how hilly the campus is and how hilly Baltimore is in general, like you're literally always walking on an incline or a decline. This is the rec center, aka the gym. I heard it was actually newly renovated, so everything there is really nice. That's the front desk and there's a place where you can swipe your J card. You kind of have to swipe your J card to basically get into anywhere. So the rec center is kind of split into two levels. The first level where you enter in is where all the cardio machines are and then you can go downstairs to the weight room. That's also where the climbing wall is and then the bouldering cave is in like a separate place. There's also a pool, tennis courts, basketball courts and stuff like that. By the way, if there are any climbers here, please do not believe what Johns Hopkins says about the climbing wall because it is absolute shit. Here's probably a non-exhaustive list of all the cardio machines at the gym and whatever this machine is. You can kind of see the climbing wall from here, but it's basically like two stories high, which is not enough. So after doing cardio, I just go down to the weight room. 
And here is the weight room. I'm sorry I did not give you a full tour because I'm super self-conscious at the gym and I do not want anyone to stare at me, so I do not have the confidence to go around filming every single machine. But here are all the machines that I know are there. I feel like whatever you're training for, this gym has got it. It's usually busiest in the afternoon and the evening, and it's super busy during the first few weeks of school when everyone's trying to build new habits, but it's much better now. After the gym, I usually wash my hands and I just wanted to show you this room as I pass by. This is the equipment rental place where you can basically just swipe your J card and then rent things like basketballs, climbing shoes, etc. Also, there's a smoothie place right inside the rec center where you can get smoothies, acai bowls, just any healthy protein type thing that you would think a fitness influencer would drink. Also, this place accepts dining dollars, which you can get through the meal plan. It's called Good Part & Co, by the way. Drinks are usually eight to nine dollars and acai bowls are usually 10 plus dollars. And with a 14 day meal plan, you get 400 dining dollars per semester. I'd say one dining dollar kind of just equates to one dollar. Okay, but just look at how sexy our rec center is. Like, wow. <laughs> Okay, so I'm back at McCoy, and every time you enter, you have to swipe your J card on that little black thing. By the way, there is an elevator in McCoy, but I just choose to take the stairs. This is not the case for AMR2, in which there are like five floors and no elevator. Yes, that is pepper spray on my keychain. Okay, so as I get ready to shower, I'm just going to run through my schedule for the day. So my first class is intro chem, but that's actually asynchronous and online, so I can just do that whenever I want. And then I have calc 2. Then I have a little lunch break, and then I go to stage regimes and contentious politics. And then after that, I have a barnstormers tech training in the glass path, which is a theater group. And then I have pilot, which is basically a mandatory tutoring session for calc 2. Do you have anything to do today? No, it's not too tiny. Favorite thing about Hawkins. Hi, my name is Grace. I'm Julia's roommate. I look really rough right now because I woke up <laughs> five don't. minutes ago. But I'm majoring in biomedical engineering. Mm -hmm. I'm from South Korea, and my favorite thing about Hopkins is honestly like dorm life. I really love our dorm. I feel like I'm really blessed. Yeah, and we live in McCoy. Yeah, so. McCoy One East. Honestly, McCoy is the best dorm, in my opinion. <laughs> Who are you? Major best thing about Hopkins. My name is Bethel. I am a freshman. My major is neuroscience. And the best thing about Hopkins, um, for me, would be like our floor and the Oh, yes. I feel the same thing. Yeah, our floor. Like, how like, close everyone is on our floor, like even our roommates. It's great. So this is Charmar, the grocery store that I was talking about, and here you can use your dining dollars to buy things like groceries, sushi, poke bowls, sandwiches, teriyaki bowls. You can also use your meal swipe to get meals in a minute, which includes a main course, which is probably like a cold sandwich or salad, a snack, a fruit, and a beverage. So here I'm on my way to class in Schaffer. And on the way, I always pass by the library. So this is the Milton Eisenhower Library, and it's also connected to the other library called Brody. But since they're connected, they're kind of basically the same thing. This is Merrick Barn, which nobody really knows about, but it's just a small theater and also theater classes are here. This is yet another entrance to Brody. There's like four entrances and I usually go to Brody after class because it's on the way back to my dorm. This is Wyman Quad where the big lecture hall Shriver is in and that's also where Schaffer is. And this is my Calc 2 class. There's about 48 people in total, and we have three lectures a week and one TA discussion section with about 25 people. The class is also taught by a PhD student, which is not ideal, but it's bearable. All my other classes are taught by professors, so. And also today was the second time that he didn't show up because of a medical emergency. So I'm really curious about what's happening, but I also hope he's okay. Okay, hi, what's your name? Hello, I'm Brian. Major? Um, computer science. What year are you? I'm a freshman. And then your favorite thing about Hopkins? My favorite thing about Hopkins is the diverse community and mm -hmm. and the and the people that I've met here. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's fair. I want to talk briefly about printing. So actually, this is the print room in Eisenhower. And it actually costs seven cents to print per page. So you have to put money into your J card using the little ATM thing by the print station. And then you send the documents you want to print to an email. And then you swipe your J card on the printer and then press print. But the only way to print double-sided is to open up that document on the quick print station computer and then print it directly from there.
So my next course was States, Regimes, and Contentious Politics, which is an intro course for international studies and also political science. It's a lecture course, but occasionally the professor will ask us to discuss certain questions with groups. And I think this class is really thought-provoking, especially as someone that doesn't really know too much about politics or social studies in general, and I definitely have a lot of imposter syndrome because everyone knows so much more than me, but I'm learning a lot. On my way to lunch, I passed by this machine, which I was told was the machine that performed the famous grape surgery, so I don't know. I guess that's kind of cool. Dang, I think all these people are coming from Hudson, which is like the STEM science-y building. So today was one of the rare occasions I decided to go to Levering Kitchens, which is arguably one of the best dining halls on campus, but you can only use dining dollars, which is kind of sad. Levering is basically split into five different stations, and there's also a little convenience store section and pre-prepared food that you can just microwave. Uh, can I have spinach? Any quinoa? Um, brown rice quinoa, sir. Uh, quinoa. I feel like this pretty much sums up my dining experience at Hopkins. The workers aren't necessarily mean or rude about it, but they are very harsh on you if you do not know what you want. This lady was pretty nice, but sometimes if you don't know what you want, they get a little bit annoyed. Honestly, the food was really good and I fell in love with tahini sauce today, so... But the salad is really huge and I could not finish this for the life of me. And I'm the type of person to finish every single bite even if I throw up at the end. So that just goes to show how big this salad is. I could definitely eat this for two meals. Also, I would recommend not putting all the dressing in because I realized that there was too much dressing and sauce that I had to take some out. I'm so freaking full. This is Levering Cafe, which is a great place to study. Also, they serve coffee, but my friend told me that the coffee was really bad. But I just wanted to point out that there's a Mac store here. You can get your computer fix, and since it's in Hopkins, they won't scam you. They also sometimes have free masks at Levering, so I usually like to stock up on them here. So here I'm going into Brody again, and Brody's actually split into many different levels. There's A, B, C, D, and the lower it gets, the more quiet it is. So D level is really quiet, and A level is really, really loud. Also, there's just the Brody atrium where people just do group study in it, and this is what it sounds like. <laughs> I'm going to B level right now, and honestly, from B level all the way to D level, they're all kind of the same volume, they're all really, really quiet, but definitely A level is really loud. Also, there's water refilling stations around campus. There's some in the rec center in Brody. I couldn't find one in McCoy, but there is one in Woolman. So, I mean, if you didn't really have your own water filter, I think you'd still survive. Here I'm just working on a draft for my short story for Introduction to Fiction and Poetry, it's my final project. Um, I just want to say that this class is really fun, there's only about 12 people, so it's like really tiny, but it's like an intro class to writing seminars, and they actually teach you a lot about how to be a good writer, and things to avoid, cliches to avoid, how to make your writing better, and as an aspiring writer myself, not like professionally, but I just really like writing, um, it's really helpful and I really think it's super fun. It's also super fun even if you're not a writer and you just want to fulfill a distribution credit or you need a writing intensive class. Here I'm just picking up a t-shirt. For our freshman class. And I actually sat down toward the exit on B level, but if you go deeper into Brody on B level, it gets quieter and quieter. So this is kind of what it sounds like. Honestly, if you walk deep enough, you'll definitely find a quiet space. So you definitely don't need to worry about going to D level or anything like that if you need a quiet space. After that, I went to tech training with the Barnstormers, which is a theater group, and they're currently putting on the freshman one acts, and I'm doing tech for that. So that means I'm supposed to control the lighting and stuff like that, except the one thing is Johns Hopkins actually tore down the only theater. So right now, none of the spaces that the theater groups are using are actually meant for theater. For example, the freshman one acts are taking place in the glass pavilion, which is this room that I'm in right now. The glass pavilion does not have a lighting board, and it's basically just controlled by light switches, which is not how it's supposed to be if you're really operating lights. Glass pav is usually used for events with speakers and stuff like that, not for theatrical productions. But JHU is supposedly building a new theater, so I guess we'll see how that goes.
Yeah. So after that, I went to Woolman to get some mail packages. If you live in McCoy, your mail goes to Woolman. And if you live in any of the AMRs, I think one of the AMRs has the mail room. So the mail room in Woolman is downstairs. And what you do is you swipe your J card and then they get your packages for you. And then you sign for however many packages you have. my hand. <laughs> yeah, no, it smells really bad and I don't know why. Wait, then who? Then I don't know who's been using the green one. This is suspicious. <laughs> yeah, no, it does. Do you want to smell it? I don't. Because it's, it's molding because like it's like a lot of water. And but there was one time where like both of them were completely soaked. She it's... bought a Swifter, but there's no, <laughs> there's no like, yeah, the yeah. mat. So wait, I feel like we need to like all like, we need to talk. I got these earplugs because, as you know, our dorm is very social, so that comes with its drawbacks. And then I also got a screen protector and this cord. And we are at the world's greatest hamburger spot, Fuddruckers, and we are about to try burgers, 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 and a little bit of chicken sandwich. Apparently today was the first day of Oktoberfest, and they had like free ice cream and free tacos and free food and petting zoos and bouncy houses and candle making and stuff and I didn't go because I didn't know about it <sighs> I'm going to go to CVS right now with a friend to buy some cleaning supplies and maybe some food I rarely go to CVS or go shopping in general but we kind of need cleaning supplies so I got a little green Wait, where'd you get it from? Like the, oh, the Apple store? Charleston? No, I ordered online. Cause I know you can like, I think you can buy it from Levin. Oh something. yeah, but I don't, I've never been to that Apple store yeah. like, on campus. Maybe. Anything else you want to say? Hoptoberfest. Hoptoberfest, yeah. So basically, I don't really know what it is, but it's like an <laughs> October festival at Hopkins. And they had food trucks. They're supposed to have a little petting zoo thing, but it got canceled because of the weather. Yeah. But I got tacos and it was really, really good. Okay. And they also had ice cream. And it's all free, so. Yeah, there's so much free stuff on there. Yeah, campus. there's so much free stuff like, all over the place. I love but it. Yeah. <laughs> So pilot is basically a tutoring thing that it's technically optional, but if you take a STEM class, you should probably take pilot, otherwise you might fail. It's basically just extra practice in addition to the classwork that you have. So they give you a problem set and then you solve the problem set together and then they give you an answer key and then you can ask questions. And the pilot leaders are all students that have previously gotten an A in that course. sleep now um, because I have to wake up early tomorrow to go rock climbing. Most people don't sleep at this time but I'm weird so yeah. Good night!